Welcome back to Network Africa. Let's wrap things up in West Africa. Now, in the latest issue of the Islamic State magazine, the group has announced a new leader for what it calls its West African branch. In this case, we're referring to Boko Haram. The latest issue of the magazine featured what it tags its first interview with Abu Musab al-Barnawi, who replaces Abu Bakr Shekau, and he's not been seen in any verified video appearance since this time last year. This development comes about seven months after al-Barnawi released a video clip describing himself as the spokesman for Boko Haram. And you should also note that the video release precedes Boko Haram's pledge of allegiance to ISIS. Joining us from London is security expert and British Army Reserve officer Chidi Nwonu. Chidi, thank you very much for your time on Network Africa. Good evening, Cynthia. Happy to be here. Now, thank you. When Boko Haram actually pledged allegiance to ISIS, there was some concern. Now that ISIS is not only acknowledging the sect, but referring to it, as, or to the group, as its West African branch, does that not raise some red flags? Uh, the, the links between Daesh and between Boko Haram are, again, quite a circumstantial. So looking at it from a holistic point of view, Daesh in the Middle East is currently under a lot of pressure. They're losing a lot of territory and being defeated by both the Kurds, the Iraqis, the U.S., and just about every player out there. So as a result of this, they're lashing out in all directions. So the attacks that you've seen in France, that you've seen in Germany, have been as a result of you know, uh, Daesh trying to expand its influence beyond its, its you know, uh, core in Iraq and Syria. So the advances or the changes in Nigeria are a function of this. The, the fact that they've had these links already, but they are now publicizing it much more, kind of indicates that it's part of their strategy of trying to divert attention from their losses at the, in their home bases to their far away what they claim to be provinces, so places like North and Nigeria. Well, well Chidi, it's, it's pleasing to know what, what you're saying is actually good news, seeing that um, there's, there's progress in the fight against um, um, terrorism. But isn't, isn't, should we not, let's not take anything for granted, is what I'm trying to say here. You think that we need to intensify regional efforts so that we're proactive and not necessarily reactive. That is the key. Exactly what you said is the key. Is the, if you notice now, that there's less attacks down by Medugri, Konduga in Borno and Adamawa State. A lot more attacks. You know, the last attack in, in Niger at the Defi region was a major attack overrun a very well-fortified base. These kind of attacks are, the, are where the problems are going to be. And it's, it will only take a regional effort with Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon and Chad cooperating and attacking in these border areas, which are technically ungoverned spaces because... It's, it's very undeveloped and very difficult for any government to impose its will. So it is the regional effort that's going to help. And in recent days, the European Union has sent $56 million to the African Union to help the MJ, MJTF uh, you know, in its fight in the Lake Chad area. So with this effort, you know, we should see an improvement in, in uh, MNJTF's actions. Well, Chidi, I, I recall that, um, I, I believe last month, it was said that the um, Boko Haram has shifted its war from ground to cyber. That's also something which ISIS um, has a similarity based on what you also say about the progress being made in the crackdown on the group. But is there any way to shut down their influence in this cyber platform so as to stop the radicalization of, pe of those who sympathize with the group and its ideology? Um, it's, it's, it's key that we obviously target the cyber element of this conflict, but from the Boko Haram point of view, the cyber element is, is relatively minuscule. Their main forms of recruitment are very low tech. It's, it involves, you know, easy, easy things like money, uh, influence, blackmail, kidnapping, extortion. So it's, it's not something that we're going to really focus that much on the cyber element mm -hmm. and more on very basic groundwork like a police work and, you know, making sure that there's good development so people aren't tempted into joining this group. It's a very low-tech group. Yeah. Not, it's not as it developed as Daesh in terms of its cyber or propaganda effort. Well, actually, do you think that this, um, this new release by the Islamic State in their, new, in their magazine, do you think it puts a stop to the rumors about the Abubakar Shekau status? Is he alive? Is he dead? Do you think this actually seals it and lets us know that it's over? No, this is, this is a very interesting question because it actually raises more questions about what has happened to Shekau, whether he's alive, whether he's dead, and why he has moved. So we've always known that Boko Haram itself consists of many factions. 
And what we've seen now is that one faction, um, the faction that wanted to ally with um, Daesh, has now come on into the fore. And Shekau has been moved aside and is now, um, it seems that al Banawi, who, you know, is a very shadowy figure, there's lots of al Banawis. we're not sure which one this is, has now come to the, uh, to, the, to the fore. And it could be because, you know, there was a lot of disquiet in, in uh, jihadi circles about the use of children as suicide bombers. It could be maybe that is what has led to the deposition of Shekau. But okay. until we get more information, we're not going to know. Speculate. Chidi, thank you so much for joining us. It's, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And on that note, we also like to say thank you for joining us on Network Africa. I'm Cynthia Arendt.